There's a saying that charcoal is as old as fire, but in the garden, it is never truly alive until it becomes part of the soil. For centuries, farmers from the Amazon to Asia have relied on charred plant matter to hold fertility, but one mystery has always lingered. How long does it actually take for raw charcoal to turn from lifeless black carbon into humus that breathes with microbes, worms, and nutrients? Many modern gardeners hear about biochar and rush to spread it across their beds, expecting miracles overnight. But plain biochar does nothing on its own. In fact, it can rob the soil of nutrients if used incorrectly. The transformation only begins when it is paired with compost or organic matter. That's when the waiting game starts, and that's what we set out to test. The real timeline of how long it takes before biochar wakes up into living humus. At its core, biochar is simply charcoal produced from plant material under controlled, low-oxygen conditions. It's a skeleton of carbon, filled with microscopic pores but stripped of living energy. That porous structure is what makes it valuable. It provides endless chambers for bacteria, fungi, and minerals to lodge themselves in. But until those spaces are colonized, biochar is little more than an empty sponge. When it is dumped raw into soil, it soaks up soluble nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and holds them tightly, leaving plants hungry in the short term. This is why so many gardeners are disappointed when they spread fresh char into their plots and see no results. The truth is that biochar is not a fertilizer in itself, it is a framework, a permanent house for life. To become soil, it must first be filled with food and microbes, that's where compost comes in. When biochar is mixed with compost, a process known as charging begins. Compost is alive with bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and organic acids. It carries the nitrogen and minerals that plants require. When blended with biochar, the microbes move in, colonizing the empty pores while nutrients lodge into the surfaces of the char particles. Over time, this pairing transforms into a living composite, stable carbon holding a web of life. The key is patience. Charging biochar is not instant. The first days see little change beyond nutrient absorption. Over weeks, colonies of microbes establish. Over months, fungal networks lace through the particles. And after a full season, the biochar is uh, pretty much indistinguishable from humus, working seamlessly with soil biology to recycle fertility. To understand this transformation more precisely, we set up a simple but careful test. Freshly made hardwood biochar was ground into small granules, rinsed to remove ash, and then divided into two treatments. One batch was left raw in soil as a control. The other was mixed thoroughly with finished compost at a ratio of one part biochar to two parts compost, kept moist but not waterlogged, and turned weekly to provide oxygen. In the first week, the compost mixed biochar showed strong nutrient absorption. Simple soil tests revealed that soluble nitrogen in the compost declined sharply, which is, you know, proof that the biochar pores were binding it. No visible change occurred yet, and earthworms avoided the mix, likely deterred by the raw edges of the charcoal. By the third week, the story shifted. Microscopic slides revealed colonies of bacteria forming clusters inside the char pores. The compost smell had mellowed from sharp to earthy, signaling stabilization. Worms began tunneling nearby, though not yet directly into the mix. At six weeks, fungal threads became visible, stretching into the pores. Worms were now regularly passing through the blend, leaving castings behind. Nutrient tests showed stabilization, nitrogen levels stopped dropping and phosphorus availability rose. The char had started functioning as a reservoir rather than a thief. By 12 weeks, about 3 months, the difference was undeniable. The compost char mixture had darkened into a uniform crumbly material. Worm activity was heavy, with castings speckled throughout. Microscopic life was thriving. The once sharp particles of char now looked weathered, coated in organic films. At this stage, the biochar had effectively woken up. It was no longer dead carbon but part of a living humus system. By six months the material was fully mature, it held moisture like a sponge, 
resisted compaction, and released nutrients slowly. In trial beds, plants grown with the charged biochar showed deeper root systems and stronger resilience to drought compared to those grown with compost alone. The experiment confirmed what old traditions hinted at and modern science now proves. Biochar only works when paired with life, and that pairing takes time. Adding raw char directly to soil delays benefits and risks stunting growth. The correct approach is to pre-charge it with compost, manure tea, or even liquid fertilizers before use. Three months appears to be the turning point where char becomes functional, but six months brings full integration into humus. For practical use, this means gardeners should think of biochar not as a quick-fix amendment, but as a long-term investment. A batch prepared this season will pay dividends in the next, holding fertility for decades or even centuries. Unlike compost that cycles within years, biochar persists. Once it has become living humus, it stays in the soil food web for the long haul, continually recycling nutrients. Earthworms play a decisive role in this awakening process. They are not drawn to raw char, which offers no food. But once microbes and organic matter colonize it, worms treat biochar particles as part of their diet. They grind them in their gizzards alongside soil grains, mixing them with enzymes and microbes. When cast out, the particles are further coated in mucus and microbial life, accelerating their transformation. This explains why worm-rich compost systems such as vermicompost bins are some of the best places to charge biochar. Worms act as both catalysts and finishers, bridging the gap between lifeless carbon and fertile humus. What makes biochar unique compared to other amendments is its permanence. Compost enriches soil but decomposes fully within years. Manure adds fertility but is consumed quickly. Biochar, once living, remains for centuries. This is why the ancient Amazonian terra preta soils, first created over 2,000 years ago by layering charcoal with organic waste, are still some of the richest on earth today. The same principle is within reach of every gardener willing to combine patience with practice. The timeline we tracked shows that results are not immediate, but the payoff is lasting. Gardeners who understand this rhythm can plan accordingly. Charge char in the background while focusing on composting and cover cropping, then introduce it into beds at the right stage. In this way, biochar becomes part of a cycle, feeding worms, microbes and roots in unison. Charcoal alone is lifeless. Compost alone is temporary. But when the two meet, a transformation begins that turns black dust into living humus. Our test revealed the critical milestones, three weeks for microbes to enter, six weeks for fungi to spread, three months for worms to move in, and six months for full integration. With that knowledge, every gardener can treat biochar not as a mystery, but as a practical tool. So the next time you hear claims of instant biochar miracles, remember that soil takes time to build, but the patience is worth it. Once awakened, biochar becomes part of your soil forever, a permanent house for life that continues to grow richer with every season. If this guide gave you insight into how biochar truly works, subscribe to Hydrohaven and share it with fellow growers. Together we can bring back the timeless soil wisdom that keeps gardens thriving for generations.